2021 was the first year in seven that initial public offerings or IPOs on London's AIM market exceeded cancellations. £1.8 billion was raised in new issues, but that was dwarfed by the £6.8 billion sterling in secondary listings. And this, uh, to some degree, gave investors encouragement to take part in what was going on. But it didn't all work out as many had hoped, with IPOs broadly performing poorly. That was even before uh, we saw the markets hammered by the Russian invasion in Ukraine. Chris Boxall is a portfolio manager at Fundamental Asset Management and, and joins us now who's been monitoring this. Chris, welcome. First of all, um, explain what's been happening in terms of IPOs because as I said at the top, it's amazing that uh, first time in seven years we've had this rise in IPOs uh, beating cancellations. Uh, what's been going on? Well, we had a lot of enthusiasm for IPOs and a lot of the retail investing community thought, oh, we're missing out, we're missing out on IPOs. There have been, so there was a new function that likes a primary bid allowed people to invest in IPOs. Now, we're, we're reluctant investors in IPOs generally. I'm pretty awful investors in IPOs. We, you know, our track record isn't fabulous. And for our aim, IHT book, as I say, we're generally reluctant. What, what we don't like about IPOs are, is the pricing of them. They're priced by the company and the broker often they often come to market at a, at an, in a perfect time perfect environment they're packaged to sell you know they come on the market everybody's you know really enthusiastic look at the profits that i've been making over the last two years look at my three years look at my growth you know it's it's, it's really a perfect environment for the for the seller and not necessarily the buyer and i think many large institutions are really naive they get sucked into prices they're willing to pay up a huge amount to, to get into the IPOs because they, you know, they've had a lot of money coming in through the door as well, and they're keen to deploy this. So it's a it's a very very diff difficult situation. And as as you said there, Jeremy, we've had even, even before the recent falls. I mean, even at the end of last year, I think only fifty percent of IPOs were above their their listing price. And now it's probably far, far worse than that. To what degree do you think there's, well, there's some education needed here for those that get into IPOs? I mean, your, your experience aside, and you're an experienced investor in this area, you're, you're an accountant, you've got an understanding of profit and loss and balance sheets and so forth, but people viewing this from outside, people that might have got involved in what was perceived at some point, I guess, to be a bit of a party, um, is that uh, they, they pulled out because things turned sour. Do you think that they misunderstood what one the company might have been standing for two what ipos entailed bearing in mind what you've just said and three this possibility that uh, that in fact they've got to be committed for a long period of time i think i think your first term there party is is absolutely spot on you get you get drawn in by us with this wave of euphoria enthusiasm and you, you you see some on other markets. Oh, look at the returns IPOs are making. You know they say oh so and so's gone up eighty percent in a day, particularly on the Nasdaq, where you see massive movements sometimes. And you you don't you always hear the good stories, but not the bad. And and I and I think we've been living in an environment of real fairy tale storytelling investing. People have been totally detached from well, what businesses are going to make in terms of real financial returns. They love they love the idea of them. They they you know they're going to deliver wonderful things other than necessarily profits or revenue. You know we've totally they're totally sort of off the scale sometimes, and people get sucked into that and and have become detached with well actually a business is there to ultimately make a return for its shareholders, employees, stuff. You know it's. It's, it's, it's there to make profits at some point. And a lot of the IPOs are, have been a million miles from that. But it's, it, it is that, that, that pricing issue. You've got little to base it on other than the company's perception and some, some very sort of fanciful comparisons to existing stocks. T typically, you know, a, an IPO is often priced based on other listed companies. Many of, many of them have been on the stock market a long time and have delivered over that period that their, their pricing therefore is you know, whereas their pricing is based on a, a valuation that only has a short term track record so it's it's very tough but it's being sucked into that and sometimes you've really got to just sit back and think well you know this looks expensive or, mm. or occasionally it looks cheap that's rare
Um, you, you've, um, we'll, we'll take a look at the five stocks in just a minute that uh, you, you wanted to talk about. But amongst those five, we've got some very different sort of businesses. Were there any notable weaknesses, do you think, of those IPOs that we've seen, those ones that didn't perform as many had hoped? Um, are there any sort of areas where, looking back, clearly there was not a market for this in the first place? Well, I think there was a market, but the market was mispricing or mis not assessing correctly the, the longer term. And that, that particularly applies to everything online. Remember, you know, when lockdown happened, all we were doing was buying stuff online and you had this, you know, wave of buying activity uh, online and online re only retailers did suddenly fantastically well. You saw this huge acceleration in growth. So what are you if you funded things privately, a private business? You go to your broker, your solicitor, you draw up your admission to think, Oh, it's a great time to list. We're going to get a massive valuation. So we, you know, we saw a lot of online retailers list, online only retailers, uh, and the numbers were based on a unique period of trading, which has not continued. And we've come to the point now, everybody's an online retailer. I'm not saying everybody does it well, but everybody's an online, you know, you have to have an online platform, delivery platform. You may not do it well, you may not make money from it, but you're still competing with our online only. That's a really interesting, um, that's a really interesting point, isn't it? And for business owners that have owned a business that uh, hasn't listed and they've been privately owned, and I, we're going to talk a, about Victoria Plumbing to begin with. You and I have spoken about this stock before, and in fact, if we bring up the chart of that, I think perhaps this says it all. But Victorian Plumbing actually had a pretty good business model, didn't it? I mean, it was already online, wasn't it, before it went to IPO? It's lovely business, fantastic, nice business, um, founder, you know, founder owned at the time, doing fabulously well, suddenly doing even better over, over lockdowns. We've got no issue about that. But it came to market at about an £850 million valuation or something on those lines, you know, was, which turned, and, and that, that is, that, uh, that valuation assumed that not only things were going to be as they had been, they were going to, the growth was going to continue to accelerate. You know, it was going to start dominating its market. And it turned out that, whoa, in the meantime, everybody else started their game. They may not be doing it as well as Victorian Plumbing, um, but they've still up their game and they're still a competitor. And, uh, you know, the really big thing about a business like this and all the others was the cost of customer acquisition. And I've heard this so often, how it absolutely plummeted during lockdown. We were all online. And so the cost to acquire customers was a fraction uh, of what it returned to. You know, previously, the AdWords were costing over the lockdown of peanuts. You know, people were just drawn to you. They, the first thing they were doing was online rather than visiting a physical store. And subsequently, they've gone skyrocketed again. So it's, it's, it's turned out to be quite expensive to find customers, retain customers, and you know, they have all the returns issues as well to, to deal with. Victoria Plumbing is another example of the company that was a huge insider sell-down. Now, I yeah. We hate insider sell downs. And effectively, I think the, the founders of this business took about 280 odd million off the table on IPO. Um, that's a lot of, lot of money. Did you, did you get involved in the IPO to begin with, uh, a Victorian? No, no, didn't touch it. No. Didn't touch it. H how about your second pick, which is Music Magpie? I think it's a sort of second hand resale phones, isn't it? It's, a, it's in the mobile phone business. Uh, Music Magpie. Um, what happened here? Because I think what the IPO price, I mean, look at the chart again. What was that? 193? What's it now? Um, it's trading well, at 65p. Yeah, no, 193, that's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, that, th this is a, I, I, it looks to me as though there was this slow grind lower and then all of a sudden, of course, you got the, the Ukraine effect and all this. Um, what, what about Music Magpie? Um, again, wrongly priced? I think, yeah, again, yeah, clearly wrongly priced relative to, I like, I like what it's doing. I like the, I like the sort of recycling of uh, electrical goods and mobile phones. I like, you know, it's good. It is ticked off for the green economy mark as well for the LSEs. And it's doing interesting things. Uh, it's got a US business as well as a UK one. Um, but it recently announced that margins are, are being squeezed. It's having to go into the wholesale market to buy some products as well, which is in, impacting it, it, its margin. So it's not just about the goods it's receiving and, 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 and turning round, uh, refurbishing, as it were. Um, again, it, pricing is clearly questionable relative to, a, to its long-term prospects. And there you, 
there it had to put out a disappointing announcement at a time when the stock market's looking very fragile, notably for smaller companies. And if you disappoint in this market, you, you just the share price gets absolutely smashed. And worse, you, you haven't got, again, as an IPO, you probably your shareholder base is probably not as loyal as you it would be. It was a well-established company. So suddenly all these newbies are thinking, well, crikey, this isn't working out as expected. Off, off we go. Um, whereas the, the institutions that backed it are, are stuck in there. But the, the concept looks good, but it's just another case of a company coming to, to market, you know, packaged to, to, to perfection, or mm. priced to perfection, should say. Yeah. Let's, let's look at your, your next one, which you've got here, which is Parsley uh, Box Group. This is an interesting one. Um, I, I'm, I'm a sucker for um, for, 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 for faddy type um, uh, meal type things. I, I, I love ordering online, but I do know that this sort of, sort of last mile type thing never really works. The business model around delivery of hot food uh, is, is not particularly profitable. Um, but parsley box and I think the other thing about this isn't it just in Edinburgh no no it's UK, UK wide it's based up there though right. but it's it's look the concept looked really good again I mean the, the concept looked good this is an example of the business that I mentioned some business that was acquiring customers very cheaply and uh, in relative terms and how those customers costs have now skyrocketed and, and when when you're in the online world the cost of customer acquisition is absolutely key you've got to be quite clever with your, your marketing to, to to lure them and keep them at a, as low a price as possible. And this is the huge swing in this business. It also had, it's had problems fulfilling orders as well, which has made matters worse. Um, but in the meantime, you can see how this price has declined and it's been at, you know, it's in a, in, a, in a terrible place. But what, what's it got left now? It's got a, a huge database of elderly uh, customers, conceivably that it could sell, it, assuming its service has been good, it could sell other things too. I think this type of business, you know, you take go back to when even when Amazon first started, it was it was just about books. But look what it looks what it subsequently became or has become, excluding excluding the Amazon web service, excluding the cloud hosting bit, but the retail bit. Once you've acquired the customers, it seems to me the logic is wherever possible, you need to sell within that demographic as much as you can to them, rather than just in this case, you know, ready meals. There there is the opportunity to do other things. Uh, I, I would suggest that that's what they should be looking at, because then you're you're spreading your customer cost of cost of customer acquisition over a, a broader base of products. Um, mm. ho hopefully, it will survive. Again, priced badly priced relative to how things have turned out. You don't you don't know what the future is going to be, but I think I think the 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 brokers and the company itself are, are pushing for that high valuation, whereas the institutions with the money should be you know, you know tempering tempering the, the aspirations and the, the prospects of it. Yeah, I think it's important, isn't it, as well, uh, to, to mention the fact that some IPOs do do very well and continue to do so even in the current environment. And I know another one you wanted to talk about was Oracle Therapeutics, uh, which has been brilliant return has seen brilliant returns yeah look it's it's not the it's not the type of business for our book and we're going to mention another one afterwards which is the same these are early stage companies in the uh, the biotech space but they but they're they're not they've come to market not simply based on a short-term uh, support as in the online retail then this 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 is a longer term story which has come to the stock market for good reasons to raise new equity to support its longer term growth story. And I think that new investors have displayed more patience. I know the shares have drifted lower, but they displayed dis displaying more patience and awareness with these longer term um, stories than they are with some, some of the, the, the newer short term online online only kind of kind of plays. And I, I think that's re that's really encouraging for a AIM struggled in the, the healthcare sector so prior to the pandemic was struggling, you know, a lot of that, the small healthcare companies were struggling to attract interest. And it's good to see that many of the newcomers that come on board have, have got their money, but seemingly they, they, they've been rewarded as well with more patient shareholder register. Mm. Are you involved in Oracle Therapeutics? We're not, no, but we, we're, we're interested. I mean, our, our AIM IHT book has very much been focused up to now on 
properties or cash generated companies but we but we recognize also the attractions and we think if of of so-called aim innovators but i think they have to be managed in a very different way i think a, a broader portfolio and it's something that we are looking at so a basket of more innovative aim companies could, mm. could be quite interesting up to now our mandate has been very much around investing in profitable cash generative businesses probably better established so rather than more speculative ones. So, so just to quickly recap on what we've also been talking about, uh, Parsley Box Group, which has dropped heavily, Music Magpie dropped heavily, Victorian Plumbing dropped heavily. Are you now enticed into some of these low rated stocks, the stocks that have been beaten up so much? The question, the short answer is no, because I think there are better opportunities out there from better established businesses on AIM whose share prices have also been smashed, yeah. uh, yet have proven themselves over multiple cycles already. So they haven't been, they've got a more stable shareholder register, but also they, you know, they've delivered in the past and shown how they can perform through some pretty tough times. You know, some have been through financial crisis, they've been through you know, a, lot, a, a lot of issues already. So they've been able to demonstrate uh, an ability to, to endure yeah. Um, the, the final stock you, you wanted to, to bring up as a good example as to what's going on in the IPO market within AIM is 4Base Bio PLC. Not heard of this company before. No, it was the top performer. I, I hadn't either as well. Like when I was looking at the top performers from 21's IPOs, this was the one that stood head and shoulders. I mean, it's delivered a terrific performance. It's just held up held up pretty, pretty well. You know, again, specialist like life sciences, it's not that big. What's the market cap? I think it's about seventy odd million. It's um, it's again, it's a lot, a long term story. Very tight shareholder register. Maybe there's greater a loyalty in there. And it's again an, an example of you know a business who who really needed, really pretty needed aim, needed new funding to support its growth. And the aim market has been there to to to, to help it. And again, shareholders are up to now showing a little bit more more patience. And I think it would be great to see more businesses like this. I mean, I'm not saying we don't want the online readers, but there are loads of them. You can go out there and there are loads of private ones. But it's the more innovative businesses that would be great to see. And we're able lost that, that edge a little bit over, over the years. And it's good to see them come back because they need a stock market. They really need, need the funding. It's a bit like the risk is for investors. It's a bit like venture capital on the public markets. You know, venture capital is principally private markets. You're not seeing this daily price. Unfortunately, it's venture capital and public markets. You'll see you can be sort of swayed by the daily, you know, roller coaster of the share prices, but you need, you really need to ignore it. Yeah, I just want to ask the same question about four base bio. Just very quickly bring the the share price back up if we can, because it was priced. I think you were saying at one eighteen pence IPO. Now it's here. We are. What are we now trading at five? 20, 5, 30, whatever it is, it's been a tremendous performer overall. Are you interested? No, because I don't know enough about it at the moment. Yeah. Um, I think the other, going, going back to that first issue about pricing, pricing of these early stage things is, is very hard. However, at least that, you know, some of them are trying to think of something really special. If you do get a success here, it can really multi bag for you, yeah. um, which is not going to be likely in, in, in other areas. Yeah. I mean, we've had some one huge aim online retail success story but there haven't been that many others uh, one, one or two i think you know, one, you, one massive one i'm thinking asos yeah um, of course which is yeah. Yeah. um just just taking a step back then and asking one simple final question lessons to be learned from what we've been seeing especially in 2021 where we saw this big uptick in these uh, yeah UAs. patience don't be rushed in don't be forced to, to paying up you you, you you're the you're given all the tools to invest. You can you can wait. And we've, you know, as I say, we've had a, in the past, we've had a dreadful track record on IPOs trying to time them. And often, the you know the better performers have become the, the ones that have been very weak on 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 IPO, but subsequently gone on to deliver. Um, so be be patient. No 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 rush to be stuck in, sucked into any of these. And you've got to get past the stories. You know the fairy tales, the wonderful. You've you've got to look at the commercial viability of the businesses. Try and try and work out this. You know the storytelling has to stop at some point, 
and there has to be a, a return to, to shareholders. It's nice to think that the storytelling will continue, but it, you know, it really has to stop at some point. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Chris, right, thanks so much indeed. It's good to be able to catch up with you again. Chris Boxall, Portfolio Manager at Fundamental Asset Management. For more videos from us here at IGTV, join us on Twitter at IGCom, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.